And today, actually, as you can see, I didn't prep the background behind me because this is not really, this is kind of a test, okay? Uh, today, we're going to look at In Sound Mind. Now, I had this game, I bought this game in the last Steam uh, st sale, which is not like the, the June one, but the one before that. And I never touched it. I just heard it's kind of interesting. So... Let's check it out. So I don't know anything about this game whatsoever, other than it's probably some kind of psychological thriller slash horror. And as you can see, I just kind of started because obviously you want to position your video in the right spot. You don't want to cover something. Uh, so you have to visually identify where everything is first. That's a very useful advice, by the way, for everybody out there. Uh, let's start from the beginning and I will go through everything I found so far, which is, to be honest, not a lot. I just played like a couple of minutes so far. So let's jump into it. And again, just today, because it's a, just a test, I'm going to go with easy because, again, I don't want to get my ass kicked. It's just to see what the game is like. And then start. And uh, continue. So you notice the uh, cat in the loading. That's cool. I like cats. So uh, bonus points there. So the one thing here is that when you actually start the game proper, you already see the uh, logos, etc. They do it one more time, which they is a bit too much. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> I killed the cat. What a bastard. Curiosity only brought her to me. So here you go, kind of classic scenario, I guess. Some kind of major disaster happened. Every, everything is flooded, right? And you start out in this room. And the first thing, well, after he says something, what happened? I don't know. More. How did I get down here? How did I get down here? Well, yeah, I'd like to know that too. The first thing you want to do here is... I'm just gonna jump in to here for a moment, all right, it's all good. The first thing you wanna do is, well, to move, look around, you just move the mouse. To move, you use the regular keys, W, A, S, D. Um, the first thing you'll notice that, again, it's pretty dark. It's one of those dark games. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna go into settings. Uh, you don't have to, by the way. I mean, that's really up to you. You want to crank up this brightness bar. I already did. Uh, the thing is, I know people don't like to be uh, like educated these days, actually. But the thing is, if you're playing something very dark, it's it's gonna strain your eyes a lot. And you know, I wear glasses. My eyes are not perfect. Part of the reason is because of a lot of video games when I was younger, and I was also painting miniature figurines didn't help anything at all. So I basically was jumping from like the screen to miniatures back to the screen and my eyes got no rest whatsoever, always kind of focusing on, on something very tiny and then the screen. So yeah, you don't want to damage your eyes. Eyes are precious. Uh, please take care of your eyes. That's very important. So if you can, uh, if you don't really mind it, then crank up that brightness meter uh, for the other settings, it's really up to you. It depends on your machine. Uh, I put it to ultra because I can. Uh, I'm playing in windowed mode right now because I'm capturing it as well. So I just want to be able to quickly jump around between OBS and the game. Uh, the texture quality is ultra. Model quality is ultra. Field of view, I'm still not exactly sure what that is. Uh, but I, I put it up from 60, I think, to 80. Just go 
into the average. Usually for action games, it's recommended to go higher. Uh, I'm not sure how much of an action game this is, though. And the fog is ultra. Now, the other thing I noticed when I was looking around very quickly is the controls. So if you look at the controls, you got your movement, you got your jump, uh, sprint, which I'll show you in a second. Sprints like Usain Bolt. Uh, crouch, and then uh, so the um, the keys, right? The one you really want to memorize is the use key, which is E. Um, usually, sometimes it can be the mouse click when you pick up objects, um, but E is more maybe like kind of a fallout or something like that. And to exit that, you press escape. So just remember E and escape. Uh, inventory is tab, which is pretty common. It's sometimes I as well, but tab is okay. And the weapon is pretty much regular. Reload is R. That's pretty much it. The one thing you'll notice here is that you get a flashlight pretty early on. And there is no key for the flashlight. So it's just used automatically. You can't, like, turn it off. And that's pretty weird. I looked in the controller layout as well. I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard. But in the controller, there is no key. Uh, I, I don't see any to basically disable the flashlight. So my conclusion is you get the flashlight and it's just gonna use up the energy uh, automatically. So yeah, don't stand around too long doing nothing. Try to use it, you know, try to use light as much as possible. So let's get going here. See what we got. All right, very dark. I think it actually, Maybe it didn't reset properly. Let's have a look. Uh, let's go to like this one first and then up. Did it do anything? Not really. All right, never mind. So you can't do anything here. So look at this sprint if you press shift. Look how fast that guy goes. Like an uh, Olympic sprinter. You can read things again. E. Catastrophe. Forget everything. Life is as as you've known it is now out of the window. All indicators are indicating stay inside. Yeah, that's kind of a classic joke. Escape. So you jump here. Crouch here. You get to this door. There's a keyhole. Can't ha can't open it yet. All right, sprint. So you have to basically just you can break this later, I guess. Looks fragile. I don't have any weapon though. Flashlight. This will come in handy. And if you look over there, at the very far end, there's some something in there. Some kind of guy or something. I don't know what that is. And he leaves you a note. a bit of crafting in this game but I haven't gotten that far yet so let's just keep going it's locked there's a keyhole like you have certain things lying around on the ground here for example this metal beam bar or whatever that is why not use that as a weapon i mean why it's just here for decoration yeah, there's a lot of stuff lying around here you can use planks um there's a there's a few more here you know um why not oh 
There we go. Open. No. Oh well. Something behind there, maybe. So you can't jump and grab two ledges, which is again pretty strange. What is this? Nosy, aren't you? Oh yeah. I might be able to break this with something. It's a fuse box. What the? Okay, so I lost a bit of health, obviously. Kind of my mistake. Should have seen it coming. There's somebody there, just standing around. All right, just we'll probably go in there. This is closed. Oh, this was something. Like it's just a police wire. You just you don't need to cut it. You just need to take it off. That's the thing. Let's go this way. Alrighty. Your office. Just wait. Okay. There's a there's a grandfather clock here, so Stranger Things. I hope Vecna is not coming. Tape. All right, so it's tape player. Look in the background, actually. That's the tape, and if, if you're like listening to it, it's actually gonna spin the wheels. I was wondering what that thing is in the back, but it's, that's the tape. Definitely the tape. I thought it's some kind of ship or something. It's not. If I can get through this, if I can just keep my mind focused, I must stay aware, awake, alert. Oh, there's a cat. Hello there. Tanya, how? I mean, hi. <sighs> I'm having a weird day. Everything okay with you? All right. Hello there, cat. It's a pretty good model. Kind of follows you. A little bit.
Good kitty. Do you know how a Rorschach test works? I show you an ink blot, and you sneak your way into an interpretation, pretending to fix other people's problems while avoiding your own. <laughs> what nonsense. Well, there's an ink blot, there's a problem. Try and avoid your problems now. Okay. Oh? I can sneak past it. I know I can. All right, and sprint. This elevator button is missing. All right, that was easy enough. All right, so above the vending machine, there we go. Maybe one sec. Shit, I have no flashlight anymore. Okay, did he actually take that thing or did he just throw it away? The, there's the grip. I see you found part of a pistol. What's your plan? To throw it at whatever comes at you? I don't think you've thrown anything since high school gym class. And if I remember correctly, it wasn't very impressive then, so... Oh, actually, hold on a second. There we go. Probably assemble something here. Yep. Uh, slide and the grip. Okay, I got eight, eight bullets, which is not a lot, but I have to use this. Oh my god. Oh. That was the first enemy. All right, so tape. Once more onto the breach. Okay, I'm actually gonna stop here because I just wanted to kind of experiment with it a little bit. Uh, it's, it's not too bad, I think, so I can just keep this as a recording as part one. Um, it's, yeah, it, it reminds me of Descent, um, the Dark Room or whatever it was called, or the, the pig one. It's very, I don't know, for, it, it's okay so far. It's obviously the, the beginning, so get the gun, start removing obstacles, and so far it's, it's pretty linear. It's very linear, actually, I have to say. You basically follow one path. Um... As you saw, sometimes I didn't answer the phone uh, because I don't want it to act like a trigger. Uh, but I think it, it does it anyway. So yeah, probably answer the phone, see what the guy says, go from there. Um, but as far as this is concerned for today, that's it. So thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time, although I'm not sure exactly when that will be. But stay tuned for more Otaku Ops, signing off.